founder of the transition movement who's bringing out a book this week called What If? And I thought that was a really good title because it's all about the imagination. Um, and soon as once we imagine, things, <coughs> we, we can then do stuff because we, we don't do anything without thinking about it first and planning it. It's all in our minds first before we do it. So, so it's called What If? What if this was really real, this artist on the moon? The spaceships had its final safety checks this afternoon. The oxygen's been tested, the pressure valves are tight, the communication systems tuned and linked by satellite. And what if Pontedao is really live across the news? And outside, stretched to clutter, there are queues and queues and queues of people out to watch the capsule being blasted into space. The engine starts to fire, you see it light up every face. And what if this small capsule made of papier mache does shoot up from the art centre and out of Swansea Bay? And there's crowds formed from the beacons to the very tip of Gower to watch it travel at 200,000 miles an hour. <laughs> You've got to make it. You've got to make it. <laughs> but what if she's so busy concentrating on some rhyme, she shoots beyond the moon, the sun, to the very edge of time? There's gazillions of galaxies stretched through outer space with swirling, crashing thermonuclear fusions taking place. And what if on return the Milky Way comes into view and on the very outer edge a tiny speck of blue, our planet Earth, surrounded by its fragile atmosphere, the only place in the whole of space where life exists is here, as far as we know. And what if, when she lands her lunar capsule on the moon, she faces planet Earth and sees the hurricanes, typhoons, the expansion of the deserts, the dying of the seas, the UK showing temperatures of 38 degrees, the human race exploding onto every patch of land, digging, dredging, drilling, trawling, everything they can. And though these penetrations cause eviction, famine, war, the crazy rush continues wanting more and more and more. And though technically in space you shouldn't hear a sound, she hears the mantra, money is what makes the world go round. Yet the web of living creatures from the oceans to the skies is starting to disintegrate before her very eyes. A steady drop of species as the temperature increases and the Arctic pole unfreezes and the water level rises and every loaded raft capsizes and the bees and colonizers are getting killed by fertilizers and all the politics are divided with blatant spread of lies this. People argue left and right, day and night, and incite and fight, and incite hate. And what if, from the moon, the artist looks on at this, this shipwreck of a planet, this heart attack, this speck of blue, this break, breaking, earthquaking in a vast, vast universe of black? What if she says to herself, well, what's the point in going back? And technically, in space, you shouldn't hear a sound. But below the cry for money, something deeper from the ground. A rumble, a thunder, a plate shift of some kind. It doesn't stop, it just keeps getting louder all the time. And when she half expects to see the planet going pop, she clocks the young protesters shouting, now this has to stop. Children, youths and teenagers walk out of their exams and 20, 30 somethings pushing toddlers in their prams, erupting from their houses and pouring into town, demanding something's done to bring the carbon footprint down. Don't fob us off with fairy tales and of economic schemes. It's time you stopped your foolishness and let us live our dreams. And what if more and more young people heard the call? And from the moon, the artists saw the politicians stall. And 40, 50, 
60-somethings stopped their current chore, and older people grabbed their coats and headed for the door. And what if from the moon she sees this rapid change of heart as all the people in the world decide they can take part? Together we unite, but individually we say, what if, what if I can change the world today? Thank you.